HTML is a markup language that we use online, but it's not the only markup language out there. And the concept of a markup language is sometimes easier to explain when we actually look at a couple of different examples. In general, markup languages are designed to explain how text should be formatted using other text. So it's not what you see is what you get, it's instead it mixes the content of a particular document, whether it's a you know, a, a text document or a web page with instructions about how the content should look. So let me give you some examples of HTML compared with some other markup languages because honestly HTML, if you're writing certain types of things, HTML isn't even the best markup language to use for certain types of, uh, sort of, certain types of documents. Okay, so let's say that, uh, let's start with HTML because that's one that we're familiar with. And let's say the goal here is that I want bold text. I want bold text. How do I get it? In HTML, what I'm going to do is I'm, uh, the, the canonical way to do this is to use something called the strong tag. So the strong tag indicates that the contents here uh, should, be, should be strong. They should be uh, stronger than the text around them. And typically, browsers will interpret the strong tag as meaning this content is now bold. So if you look at this in a browser, you would see that this is bold. How about using some other markup languages? So there's something called LaTeX that is frequently used by people when they're formatting papers. So LaTeX also has a way to make text bold. Here's how bold text looks in LaTeX. I want to learn how to type. Um, so this is interesting, right? Um, here I have the tag that starts with strong, ends with forward slash strong, and the contents are in here. In LaTeX, I start a tag with this uh, backslash, text BF, that's text boldface, this open uh, curly brace, and then here's the contents of the tag and then the end curly brace. So this is how it would look in LaTeX. Let's look at a couple of other pretty common text-based markup languages. There's something called Markdown, which is quite common online. Uh, you can use Markdown to write readme files on GitHub and in a variety of other places. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, in Markdown, here's how you get bold text. Double star, I want bold text, double star. Um, so Markdown will find the double stars in your document, determine what text in between them, and make that text bold. So this is how it looks in Markdown. Um, here's another example. Uh, there's another markup language that I like that's called ASCII doc. Interesting ASCII doc. Um, oh yeah, I need to scroll down here. Let's see, oh, ah, here we go. So in ASCII doc, the interesting thing is that bold text is a little bit confusingly different from Markdown. So you'll see in ASCII doc, ASCII doc, the markup language has just decided that bold text is in one star. So here's the start, here's the end, and the ASCII doc will, compiler will just figure out what parts of the document should be bold. In Markdown, it's two stars. So, um, so here's a sort of a comparison of these, of these four different mark, uh, markup languages um, doing the same thing. All I want is bold text. In HTML, I use the strong tag and I have to close it with another strong tag. In LaTeX, I start a tag using text BF in this particular case and then these braces define uh, where the tag goes. In Markdown and ASCII doc, I, I use stars, either two in Markdown or one in ASCII doc. Now what's interesting about this is if you look at the number of extra characters I had to type to achieve bold text, right? So in, in HTML, I have strong, which is six characters, plus the tag is eight. Over here it's nine because I have to close the tag. So that's 17 extra characters I had to type to get bold text. In LaTeX, I had to type four, seven, eight, nine. So nine extra characters. Markdown it was four. ASCII doc it was two. So there are newer Markdown languages, or Markup languages, sorry, like Markdown and ASCII doc, that are really designed for people to write text in. And part of their goal is to make the markup component of the text as lightweight as possible. That makes it faster to write things, and it makes the text a little bit less cluttered. Um, and so, in general, if you're writing content for the web, I would suggest that rather than writing HTML, which you can do when you start, when we get started, find a way to write things in a better markup language, a more modern markup language, and have that be converted to HTML rather than writing it in HTML directly.